Hello, my soccer universe. Let's induct a um, player into my soccer hall of fame and now for the Austria section, which probably is the least heralded of the um, four that I'm planning to do, but it's also important to me. I am from Austria and I want to highlight a few players that I grew up with that I, you know, that I experienced and that I find worthy of mentioning as being part of the my soccer hall of fame and the first one that i'm gonna induct is a player that i had for the most of the time a very ambivalent um relationship to because he probably was the best player in the Aust that the austrian league has seen uh in my time let's put it that way this is the 90s and the 2000s i think now with salzburg and so on getting some high profile players maybe uh but uh, to be honest when I was actively going towards the stadium, he was clearly the best player around. Uh, he was not only in playing the Austrian league, he had two stints away uh, from Austria. And funnily enough, he is not originally Austrian, but he became a kind of important Austrian national team player. Um, we are talking about Ivica Vastic. And Yes, it's Ivica Vastic and not Vastic, as uh, many commenters said. You can do it very well for all the Serbian and Croatian players, but for Austrian players, you think you need to pronounce the K. It's Ch, because he is originally from Croatia. And why did he end up in the Austrian League? Well, there was always kind of this pull uh, that you go. Uh, play in Austria when you were from uh, Yugoslavia. They, it was always kind of there were many players from uh, former Yugoslavia going to Austria already. But in his case, he was born in Split. Actually, could have tried out with Hajduk, but ended up with a smaller um, team from Split, R RNK. But then the Yugoslav war hit, and with some connections to family in uh, Austria, uh, in Austria, he actually landed in Vienna at first Vienna, the oldest uh, club in Austria, where I remember him uh, popping up here, here and there and already scoring. He then went uh, after a year there to St. Pölten and this is where I really got for the first time uh, acutely aware of him because he not only played against Las but in the high highlights. He scored in that season already 18 goals in 34 games, so really a uh, dominant player there. And um, of course, you noticed him and that he was not only a goal, goal scorer, a very um, gifted, technically gifted player. Uh, he spent then a half season at Admira where, yeah, was not all that uh, memorable because he then went to Duisburg uh, in 94 to finish the season there, but uh, did not score anything in the Bundesliga. And then the move of his career happened. Uh, in 94, he was uh, bought uh, by a new Sturm president, Hannes Kartnick. Um, they also hired an Ivica Osim as a coach. And he became the fulcrum of the great Sturm Graz team of the mid to late 90s, early 2000s. He was devastating there. His stats, 250 games, 125 goals, says it all in a way. But he was not only a goal scorer, he was the creative mastermind of that entire team. Uh, they had actually a veritable striker, you know, in the, there was the magical triangle in Graz with Reinmeier, Vastic and uh, Haas. And Haas was actually the striker, Reinmeier a little bit on the back. And Vastic, I think his position was, is kind of this fantasist uh, Italian thing where is you are not quite a striker but you also you but you also not really a playmaker this that was kind of his role there and he led Sturm to the first titles in history uh, there was a cup title in 96 and in 97 and then again in 99 unfortunately in the final against Lask I was there lost on penalty shootout but he scored an own goal for Lask which will, would be his first goal for Lask that he, will, he scored and then um, in 96 Sturm was already very close to becoming champions they had last day of the season they could, if they would have won against Rapid they would have become champions, uh, did not win uh, 97, was kind of this transitionary uh, season. I think 
This was the season where uh, they got uh, Giannini from Roma and it kind of was all a little bit too much. For 97, 9, 98 they switched to the new stadium and Sturmkrass, this was probably the best Austrian team that I have seen that season. I think they were already by the end of March, they were champions. And Vastic was the man there. Absolutely. Uh, he was the superstar and at that time I think in 96 he became an Austrian citizen so he could start 97 already in World Cup qualifying become part of the Austrian team a team that was really hard to break into because we have a lot of established stars with uh, Andreas Herzog and Tony Polster playing in the Bundesliga and many other teams but the team uh, we call it team chef is the national team coach uh, Prohaska kind of gave him a role in 1997, trying to find a role for him. Uh, and since his form was quite good, he, he, he could not really be denied. But uh, he also was always in the shadow of especially Tony Borst and all the other Austrian teams, uh, bigger Austrian players. And I remember that many even said, well, he's not really Austrian. So he was not outside of Graz, where he was adored. He was not that welcome, to be honest. Uh, I remember 997. I saw every Austria home game. I watched. I saw his first goal scored against Estonia, and I said, "Yeah." From that moment, I said, "Now." It was kind of. I mean, I don't want to say I was 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 in camp because you know he had a nationality. We knew he he he's a good player, but I say. Now he has scored, yep, I should consider him as uh, Austrian, uh, but it was also, he had hurt Lask so many times that I was kind of mm, not very happy. And I remember when he scored, uh, he even got a little bit injured uh, on that and I was hoping, yeah, because we were playing Sturm soon, maybe, 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 no, he played and he scored, of course. So yeah. Uh, that Sturm Graz team in 97-98 was probably the more most dominating one. Then the next one in 99, they also became champions and then they won the double, as I said, in the cup final against Lusk. They did not win it uh, the next year. Then Innsbruck's uh, turn came with three titles in a row, but uh, interest love in 2000 and 2001 in the Champions League was kind of the last big time with the Osim. Uh, Sturm Graz team, they managed actually to go in the second group stage in the Champions League. There was a second group stage winning the Champions League room with a negative goal difference. Losing twice 5 0, but getting enough points in order to, I think, against Monaco and Galatasaray, they, won to, they lost twice 5 0. This was the third time that they were in the Champions League. The first time it was a disaster. Then uh, they were performing well and then they really got going. But um, the era of the Iwitz Osim Sturm Graz teams came a little bit to an end and I think it was he was at the age you know breaking 30 uh, where actually no he was actually over 30 already so in 2002 he ends with Sturm Graz um, for one last season where they again uh, Sturm could not keep the momentum going and he uh, spent a season in Japan at Nagoya Krampus 8 that stint in Japan went a lot better than um, the one in Germany because he still scored 13 goals in 27 games. But then the new kid on the block kind of was Austria Vienna with Frank Stronach trying to bankroll a super team. And they got Vastic for um, two, the two seasons where again uh, they, they could not challenge really for the title although they all, he lifted clearly even as a mid 30 year old uh, he clearly lifted the team uh, and guided them to in 2005 to uh, winning the cup against Vienna in a final where he uh, I think even scored two goals or some, something like that amazing enough they did not come uh, renew his contract they thought he's old um, and so a little team from Linz picked him up, linger, uh, lingering in the second division, having had the worst time in their history uh, up, up, up until then. A few years later, it should get even worse. Uh, and with Vastich, they immediately became title contenders. Immediately. And he immediately uh, won the Golden Boot in Austria. Uh, in the second league with 19 goals. Unfortunately, there was just one team that was a tad bit better. It was, I think, Altach. Um, so he had to spend another year in the second league. 
this time scoring 23 goals and Lask cruising to being promoted to the first division again. Um, he already had won the Golden Boot in 96 with 20, 20 goals and then with an then incredible 32 goals in 2000 there and I remember uh, we had this uh, tipster game between my friends and me and uh, one of my buddies picked him and because of he made so many many goals he had won wrapped up the game uh, right around half time already because it was just uh, crazy so yeah there was always, up until he came to Lask, there was always this kind of admiration. He's a really good player, but he has done so much against us that, you know, what's much to like there. But as soon as he was Lask, he became immediately everyone's darling. And amazingly enough, and um, he played an extraordinary season in 2007-2008 for Lask that only at the end, I think he got a little bit injured, um, fell off the rails a little bit. Uh, he was not the best goal, goal goal scorer. He was clearly um, of the team. He was, you know, not as fit anymore because, you know, he was getting up there in age. However, he lifted them, I think, at the three-quarter mark. They were in first place and then it just fell apart. Uh, I still blame the president for causing unrest but not securing up the coach. Um, and then his time came uh, to, you know, everyone was wondering. He became Austrian Soccer Player of the Year in 2007. Uh, awarded, he already won at Sturm Graz three times. He became the oldest player and I think the first player to even do it with two clubs. But I'm not 100% on that one. But he won it in 95, 98, 99 and 2007 playing for Lask. Uh, also says that the league was not all that... Um, was very level and he kind of he was the household name playing there um he got a call up for euro 2008 and this leads us now again i wonder before we finish with lask a little bit his national team career because his biggest moment up until that point was at the world cup he was clearly uh going to make a world cup squad in 98 he helped austria get there he was maybe not uh a vital player but I think in 97, 9, 98 the three up front at Sturm Graz uh, should probably have all played at that World Cup because the stars uh, Herzog and Poster were not really fit. If the coach would have been brave, brave enough he would have played those three up front. Uh, we saw in the last game against Italy when they played actually at the end that they would have been that devastating up until that Austria showing was lackluster. But his big moment came when in stoppage time, 1-0 down to Chile, he, in typically Vastishman uh, way, scores the equalizer. And at that point, I think everyone kind of really accepted him. Yeah, now he's our Evo. That was his uh, nickname. And uh, ahead of the World Cup, even Tony Poster said, you know, he is actually the main man. I give up my number nine for him. Tony Polster chose number 19, Vastich got number, number 9, a number that he was uh, wearing for most of the time. Not He then, not though at Euro 2008, there he for some reason chose 7 and that and with that number he ended then at Lask, although he started with number 9. Um, he was the focal point of the Austrian national team every thereafter up until 2000. Two, uh, when he went to Japan, he wasn't called called up. But when, when he came back, uh, the coach Kranke this time called him up, and uh, for instance, he got a vital victory in Wales where he scored two two goals. But you know, everyone thought in 2005 it's over. No, for Euro 2008, everyone said he needs to be called up. He got the call up, and what a call up it was! Um, in the first game, losing one 0 to Croatia, he came on where the whole stadium was. Uh, screaming for him to come on. Uh, the game was lost, he could not uh, do any impact there, but uh, against Poland, a game that also should have ha wrapped up a half hour mark. Poland got a, a very generous goal where the uh, score was offside. I was in the, in the stadium at the time. Uh, yeah, um, Poland leads and the coach needs to get an impulse, Vastic comes on. 
uh, late in the half and Austria gets admittedly lucky pen pen penalty. I think uh, all of Poland was very upset with that. I can understand that, but have in mind, you guys got gifted a goal. And who steps up? Vastic at the age of 38. He steps up to the penalty and you've never seen him uh, shoot a penalty that hard. He was more like the uh, a taker that had a little bit more skill or, you know, uh, a silky touch, a little bit like Pirlo. He hammered it in because he was so nervous and he scored. And to this day, a Lusk player is the oldest goal scorer at a Euro, Euro tournament. And then I remember in the final game against Germany that Austria needed to win to it at once. Uh, one of the talking points is why didn't the coach bring on Vastic? He didn't. And thus his career basically ended with that, national team career ended with that last kick. His last career also, and his career in general also, he played one more season, one more season uh, 08, 09. Um, again, not. Lask was not that great of a team at that moment, unfortunately, anymore. And um, so uh, the season went so and so. However, uh, he, in his last game, he did not play the last uh, game of the season because this was away from him. He wanted to end with a home game that everyone says, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, he scores two goals. And I think, no, Michael Bauer also played his last game for Lask and also scores two goals in, a, in one of the cheesiest send-offs ever. Needless to say, I'm wearing his, uh, I have a Vastage jersey, I'm wearing this, unfortunately the number is a little bit cracked, kind of reminds me of the video on my Dutch jersey that I did uh, just, just before that one. I have to say with him playing for Lask uh, made me like him a lot more. Uh, Lask wanted to keep him, but I, under, I understand he declined that and yeah, uh, he had some stints for Austria and Mattersburg, but he was always, the soccer that he played was anything but what he liked. He was kind of defensive or so on, and now he's kind of in the youth academy, I think, of Austria, I want to say. Let me check this quickly. Yeah, he's still um, uh, there. His son is playing uh, at the uh, rival of Lusk. But... It's his player career that you really, really, that was really, really impressive. So I don't want to talk much about his coaching career. Uh, he was the best player that I have seen play in the Austrian league, bar none. And in the end, Sturm Graz was already black and white. He finally chose the right black and white team towards the end of his career. He lifted us up in the first division, gave us a wonderful first season in the first division, I have to say. Unfortunately, he couldn't get younger. But anyway, I thank him very much for that. I thank him all the things that he has done for Austrian soccer. Um, even though he still has this kind of Croatian accent in there, he never, but, uh, he never spoke like uh, fluent, fluent German, but he, of course he could make himself understood, but he has always this accent there, which kind of maybe pissed off many uh, people, especially in Vienna. But for the teams that he played for, maybe especially Sturm Graz and Lask, he will always be remembered as one of the best players to play for them. And with that, Ivo, I induct you in my soccer hall of fame. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.